Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fall on all of them which was heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter. Because of the Galileans also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that which should be baptized? which received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. They prayed, they him to tarry certain days. May God continue to add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his already blessed word. Let us pray. Most gracious, loving, kind, merciful God, we first of all want to give you thanks, God, for another opportunity to come out and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we got so many things to thank you for, God. We thank you, God, for allowing us to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we invoke your Holy Spirit to come in, God, and to sup with us, God. We ask right now that you will endow us, God. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning and giving us the use and activity of our limbs, God. The blood is yet running warm in our veins, God. We thank you, God, that you have allowed us to be used as your vessels, God. We ask right now, God, that you will continue to bless us, God, in every endeavor, God, in everything that we set our hearts and our minds to do. We ask right now, God, that you will bless the man of God and that you will use him, God, that you will anoint him, God, and give him a fresh word for your people. Because we all stand in the need of a word, God. We know that your word will keep us and your word will sustain us, God. Your word will, Father God, do what it set out to do. We ask right now, God, that you will bless me home, God, as you have in days past. We realize, God, we didn't make it by ourselves to this far, God. We can truly say, down through the years, you have been good to us, God. And what a mighty God we serve, God. We ask right now, God, that you will bless each ministry here, God, and not only here, God, we ask that you will bless us, God, and to go out into the community and do, Father God, the things you have called us to do, compelling me and we and boys and girls to come to you, God, because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Father God, we
trustees, dynamic ministerial staff, and you, this great church, the sweet home, missionary Baptist church. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, 
and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. One verse in your hearing. Word of God for the people of God be blessed in the presence of God. I want to talk about a promise to Jeremiah. A promise to Jeremiah. And what I've discovered that no matter what we deal with in life, there's a promise from God. If you take the time and study your Bible and seek God's word, pray, you'll find that every problem that you deal with, God has a promise just for it. If you're struggling and can't find your way, sickness is in the land. He told Solomon in 2 Chronicles 7.14, If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal the land. Dealing with enemies because God has blessed you. He promised you that he make your enemies your footstool. If you're hungry or need shelter, he promised us that he would supply all of your needs. Sick and pain rattling through your body. He promised you that I am the Lord that healeth thee. And all these promises are good when they're kept in the right context. But the promise to Jeremiah is one of the most powerful promises in the Bible. This particular promise gives us an invitation to talk with the Lord. The writer said, just a little talk with Jesus and everything will be all right. Now what makes this promise so significant is you have to look at the setting of the promise. This particular promise traces Israel's history all the way back to the time there was one nation. It goes all the way back to the death of Solomon. And after Solomon died, Rehoboam and Jeroboam uh, became kings. The nation was split. It was divided. Rehoboam was king of Israel and Jeroboam was king of Judah. And these two could never get along. There was always war between the two. A man in Rehoboam dies and Ahijah, his son, takes his place. Yet the war between the two is still going on. The northern kingdom now at this point had not had any good kings. And now they are on a road of destruction and they're lost. The southern kingdom is on its way down the same road that the northern kingdom had taken. Zedekiah is now the king. And he will be the last king to rule over Judah. Zedekiah is now ruling under the siege of Nebuchadnezzar. A man being under the siege of this fierce Babylonian empire. They were mean. They, 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 they had no concern. They had no remorse. They had no forgiveness. And now they have Israel under siege. Uh, amen. And, and I need to tell somebody today that you might be under siege financially, but, 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 but God got a promise just for you. Uh, uh, you might be under siege mentally, but, but God said, I'll keep him in 
perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You, you, you might be under siege by Satan physically, but, but, but God told me to tell you that he's still watching over you and he got a promise that he's going to deliver you in due season. Uh, uh, you might be under siege spiritually, but God told me to tell you that, that, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I, I wish I had some liberated saints that say, I can praise God no matter where I am. I can praise God no matter what I'm going through. I can praise God no matter how bad I feel. I can praise God no matter how broke I am. I, I can praise God no matter how many problems I got because sooner or later he that said he would come shall come and he's coming with 10,000 blessings in his hand just to satisfy the poor. I wish I had about five liberated saints to say, look where God has brought me from. Look at the setting. Nebuchadnezzar and the fierce Babylonian Empire has come in and taken them under siege. And notice now the setting, but look at who God gives the promise to. He gives it to a young man by the name of Jeremiah who said, Lord, I'm too young to speak on your behalf. He gives it to a, a young man that cries all the time and known as the weeping prophet. God can use anybody. And you be careful how you look down on folks. Because you don't never know who God going to raise up to give you a word. You be careful how you try to judge folks. Because you don't know what God is doing in a person's life. You be careful how you overlook folk. Because that same person you overlook might be the one that to put food on your table one day. You don't know what God is doing. Look at Jeremiah. Preach Jeremiah. I want you to tell them Babylon is coming. And I want you to tell Zedekiah that he must surrender to Nebuchadnezzar. What a message of gloom. What a message of doom. But if, but if God told him to tell it, he just simply got to tell it. If God spoke it to him and said, speak to my people, he, he just got to tell it. He can't add to it. He can't take away from it. He can't dress it up. He just got to tell it just like it is. Now notice, where he been? Sitting down in a dungeon with mud and mop and very clay up to his waist. And here sat Jeremiah getting a word from the law. And while sitting there, Jeremiah's life, just like our life, got frustrated. Jeremiah said, Lord, I won't speak another word, nor will I make mention of you anymore. But while sitting there in the midst of his situation, God started working on him. Somebody now going through something. And all God doing is working on you, getting you ready so that you can have a Jeremiah experience. Because Jeremiah said, hold on a minute, look what God done for me. Even though I'm in the mocking mirror clay, I know God is able like the Hebrew boy sitting down in the fire. And I hear Jeremiah saying, hold on, I can't hold my peace. I, I got to tell somebody, it's like fire shut up in my body.
message. The message has now turned before the situation changed. Oh, somebody ought to got that. The message has now turned before the situation changed. Jeremiah, you told them Babylon is coming. You told them to surrender to Nebuchadnezzar. But go back and tell them again. Tell them they're going to return from their captivity. Tell them that I'm still going to deliver them. And somebody today who needs to know that it looked like God has forgotten you, but the message has turned and God wants you to know that he's still going to deliver you. Tell them, tell the nation of Israel, I know where they are. I know they're in captivity. But tell them, they got a future kingdom coming. And I need to tell the church, I know it look bad now. I know death is all over the land. Sickness is everywhere. Travel over every hand. But I need to tell you, there's a future kingdom coming. Oh, somebody say, Lord, let that kingdom come. Tell them, even though my people aren't going to believe you, even though they are a stiff-necked people, even though they are hard-headed people, and they're the evil and adulterous generation, and they're looking for a sign. So Jeremiah, this is what I want you to do. You can find it in verse 43 of chapter 32. I want you to go by a field that belongs to Babylon. I want you to buy a field. I want, I want you to buy the land that's desolate and, and is barren. And I want my people to see that the Babylonians are occupied in it. And every time they look at the land you bought, they know that I am a promise keeper. Somebody asked the question one time. There was a man that was blind. Say, who did sin that this man was born blind? Jesus said, no, ain't nobody sin. But it was done for the glory of God. Sometimes you go through stuff not because you've been bad or you did wrong. It's just for the glory of God. And, and when you can shout your way out, praise your way out, dance your way out, it's all to the glory of God. I'm telling you, little boy, little weeping prophet, what to do? Jeremiah didn't hesitate because of the third point. He looked at the giver of the promise. Don't, don't focus so much on your situation. And even when you don't understand the promise, keep your eyes on the prize. Look at the giver of the promise. In the 30th chapter, in that second verse, he told Jeremiah, I am the Lord God of Israel. In the 32nd chapter, 27th verse, he said, Behold, I am the Lord. I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that God can handle your problem? Do you believe 
that God can handle your situation. When I come to tell y'all there's a promise for everything that you're going through. In the 33rd chapter, he talks about Christ is the branch, the promise that is to come. In the 33rd chapter, he gives Jeremiah a powerful promise. Because I heard the word say, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time. Somebody ought to give God a second time praise. Because somebody said, He's the God of a second chance. Have I got anybody that had a second chance? Ought to give God a second chance shout. I don't know about y'all, but all I have about ten shouts. Because the Lord has gave me a chance over and over. Somebody on a Jew God a crazy prayer. And while he will yet shut up in the court of the prison, God showed up at the worst time of Jeremiah life. I got anybody that can testify that when you don't know what to do, the Lord will show up for you. I got anybody that can testify when you don't know which way to turn that the Lord will step right in give God a show of praise and when the Lord show up for you he surely will show out for you have I got anybody can testify that the Lord has a show
answer me. And I will answer thee. And I will show you great and mighty things which you know is not. You want to change something? Call on it. You want to heal it? Call on it. You want to deliver it? Call on it. You want to break through? Call on it. You want a blessing? Call on it. You want Corona gone? Call on it. You want the church on back up? Call on it. Amen. Amen. And amen. 